Welcome to another episode of Expand the Business, the intersection of transaction and transformation will be help you multiply your efforts into better results. My name is Bijal, your host for the show today, and we have a slightly controversial topic that we are going to get into. But first of all, let me introduce you to Gary Perot. Gary, welcome to the show. Bijal, thank you very much. It's great to be here. So Gary, you've been helping busy professionals learn how to better invest in real estate. In fact, many people will call you the professor of cash flow and you look the part and you think the part and that's a well-deserved uh, title for you there. But let's just, I'm gonna, I, I don't normally do this, but I want to jump to the end for a second here, okay? Sure. Because your white paper is entitled um, uh, uh, why, um, why Saving Money for Retirement is Dumb. And a lot of people hear that and go, what, what are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> so, so we'll get to that in just a second. But that's, that's quite a statement coming from you. And I hope you've got some evidence to back it up. Well, yeah, we, there are a lot of uh, uh, statistics that show that uh, our current way of promoting retirement in America is flawed. So, uh, you know, the, you, you measure something by the results. And I think we can all agree to that. So, yeah, I'd like to talk about that. So, so we'll come, we'll circle back to, to that white paper in, in a few minutes here, but let's just kind of dive in and learn a little bit more about you and how you've ended up becoming a real estate investor. So you sure. were a top sales engineer for Intel. So what made you kind of leave that comfortable position and decide to both become an entrepreneur, but also basically invest in real estate? Well, you know, um, Intel is an amazing company. They, at the time, they were the largest semiconductor company in the world, and they set all kinds of records, and they prompted the whole internet explosion, Moore's Law, I mean, an explosion of technology. They were the, at the foundation of it. But it got to the point where I was just doing the same thing over and over again. It was just a little bit faster and a little bit cheaper and a little bit, you know, uh, more powerful. And so uh, I, I wasn't being challenged anymore. And besides that, the idea of just bringing home this nice fat paycheck and having wonderful stock options, you know, it made my bank account look great. But, you know, passing it along to my kids, they weren't engineers and they were looking at a world that had become flat. Uh, the Internet had happened. Uh, total industries were being uh, uh, outsourced or even evaporating. And I was concerned about their ability to. Uh, uh, really prosper in the net over the next uh, you know 40 years and I knew that real estate was the key not only real estate but also knowing how money works and being on the right side of, of, of money on the right side of debt you know on the right side of compound interest we've all heard the quote attributed to uh, Albert Einstein that uh, compound interest is the uh, the the seventh wonder of the world or the eighth wonder whatever it's 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 the next one the big one and uh, even Warren Buffett uh, uh, talked about it. So uh, well, I wanted my kids to be able to profit. About that, Gary, because you, you call it the eighth wonder of the world. But here's, here's you know, and I've learned about this very late in my, in my uh, entrepreneurial career, both in terms of compound interest and compound effort, right? But we call it the eighth wonder. And I've, I've heard that saying too, the eighth, the eighth wonder of the world. But here's the thing. All those, ever, all those other seven wonders won't impact your bank account, right? It won't impact your authority. So we may want to rephrase that and it's possibly say it may be the, the, the most important wonder of the world when we truly understand it. In fact, you know, it's one of the things that I uh, recommend all parents take a moment to teach their children. That's given that most parents even understand what the, what the effect of that. So, Gary, just kind of just touch upon it. I know it's not about compounding, but... Can you just touch upon why that's such an important concept um, to, to understand, uh, and which is a great lead into the rest of the show here? Sure. Well, sure. you know, uh, yeah. our whole school system has been set up uh, in, under the Industrial Revolution to train people to be good employees in a cog inside of a, a machine. And uh, it, we haven't changed. You know, we've had all these revolutions since then, and our educational system has not kept pace. So now we have people that are being trained for jobs that are disappearing. And people are uh, now have to work. Uh, I'll show, I show in the white paper that uh, if you wanna uh, earn, if you wanna retire with $20,000 a month income, you have to earn 
2.8 million dollars at six percent and that is only going to last you for 20 years and about 50 percent of the population i have the exact number in the in the in the white paper but about half the population ends up dying with about ten thousand dollars in their bank account that's not a comfortable place to be uh when when you're when you're at end of life and your options for creating new income are severely limited so being on the right side of of um, of compound interest means that you can have your money work for you and it means that you don't have to work anymore and every time you if, if you read the uh have you ever read the uh the the richest man in babylon uh, wonderful oh, yeah. story yeah. yeah so so that's where you know every dollar that you put to work for you has children and every year those children have more children so you have grandchildren and great grandchildren and they are all working for you so that you don't have to work so the great thing is in 10 years you can have enough money uh, enough uh, assets to fund a retirement uh, if you just choose to do that Gary, you know, I, I want to be authentic to the audience and kind of use myself as an example of somebody who didn't. Okay, okay. and I, I, you know, I, I got involved in the development very young, you know, right after college, like in 1992, so a, a few, you know, a couple of years ago. <laughs> um, um, but through personal development, I kind of jumped on this bandwagon that you know I'm going to achieve success, right? I'm going to make my millions in, in whatever endeavor I, I, I do, and I wasn't right. very um, good with my saving because I put every penny back into whatever venture I was working in, right? right and right. I tell my kids, do not make that same mistake because right. no matter how smart you think you are, you you're not as smart as compound interest, you know, and right. not as smart as cash flow, right? So That's right. That's right. the the discipline of of early investing, early compounding can dramatically impact your life and i think that's really what you're kind of a, an advocate for right in terms of hey first of all it's never too late you know it's, it's part one so you know we can't go back in time and change any of that but today is a great day to start thinking about the topic that you're going to be really talking about which is uh different ways of investing your money in real estate such that you can start taking advantage of compound interest and all the other benefits so first of all Gary, how, how did you get started what was the first thing you did in, in this world of real estate investing? Well, first off, I want to clarify because compound interest is still on the side of creating a big pile of cash. What we're really talking about is changing, shifting, and it, it's similar. What you want to do is you want to get assets that are working for you. So compound interest is one way, but buying and acquiring assets that inherently throw out cash every month, that's different. You can still use a compounding effect because you can take that cash flow and you can roll it back in and buy more assets. And so there is a compounding effect. But with cash flow, you get something even more powerful than just interest because what you can do is you can acquire cash flowing assets that will produce uh, retirement income at a much faster rate than you can just acquiring cash that's going to give you 6% because you so can get a higher than 6% rate of return on, on cash flow. So real estate is an amazing asset class because it's inherently tied to income, uh, monthly income. You have people paying rent, you have people making mortgage payments. And so it's very easy to use real estate to generate monthly income. And if you shift from building up a big pile of money to building up assets that throw off money every single month and that those support you, once your income exceeds your expenses, you're now out of what uh, Robert Kiyosaki calls, you're out of the rat race. And you I no longer have that. to work. And now you can take all the time that you were spending on your job and you can throw it into your investments and into your lifestyle and into your family and to whatever else you want because you no longer have to work for a living. I, I love that concept, Gary, because you, know, you, you create you use the cash flow to create both capital and fuel the compound interest as well. So you can basically start with that vehicle of cash flow through the real estate, then build a right, capital right. reserve and put money into your compounding effect as well. And there, there becomes your machine for basically perpetual wealth. That's right. So you get the cash flow earlier and you even get to that big pile of money or assets sooner too, because you're on the right side of that equation where you can take that engine 
and you can uh, you can compound it even faster than you could if you were just putting it into a mutual fund. Uh, brilliant. Okay, so let's kind of switch, switch subject for a second here, which is um, some, some kind of technical questions, right? Which is, um, is it better to use a retirement account for investing in real estate or a regular personal savings account? Well, you know, one of my favorite answers for most questions in real estate and finances is, it depends. It really depends upon you and what your goals are. I think you should always have a retirement account where, th where your taxes are either tax deferred, as in a Roth IRA, I mean an IRA, or completely uh, not taxed at all as in a Roth IRA. And most uh, people who are watching this probably know that if you put your money into an IRA, it goes in tax-free, it grows tax-free, but it's taxed when you take it out when you have a bigger a bigger p a bigger pie to tax whereas roth you tax it on the front end and then it grows tax free and then when you take it out the bigger pie is no longer taxed so i i love roth iras for that reason but uh it depends um when you're doing certain kinds of investing uh some of them are more um inherently tax favored so owning a house for example is a tax favored strategy because you can take depreciation and you have lots of expenses. So if you don't freak out with all the expenses that it takes to own a property and to run it, uh, it's okay. If you don't mind taxes, toilets, and trash, uh, and tenants, uh, you, can, you can do that. Um, however, um, it's hard to do that inside of a retirement account because if you own a house inside of a retirement account, uh, there are lots of limitations on that house because it's not your house, it's owned by your retirement account. And there's something called a, um, a prohibited transaction, which means you do something to that house that now is prohibited by the IRS and they will come in and completely wipe out your IRA. They don't take the money, but what they do is they give the money to you and that is a horrendous taxable event potentially, where now all of your uh, tax shelter is removed because you did something wrong. And the reason that happens is that you cannot do anything that is an active uh, uh, element in your, in your IRA. Or, or if you do, it will be either taxed or will be prohibited. So the story goes that if you own a house in your IRA and you buy a light bulb from your IRA, that's fine. But if you go and you screw in the light bulb, now you just created a prohibited transaction because that's sweat equity. And you can't you can't work on the house yourself. You can't live in the house yourself. You can't have a, a parent or a child living. And of course, disclaimer: I should have done this at the beginning. I'm not a CPA. I'm not a registered financial advisor or an attorney. So anybody uh, considering any of what I'm saying, discussing here, uh, should talk to their licensed professional. I'm doing this for entertainment and education. But. Um, if you, if you own a house in your IRA, you could run into trouble. Whereas a, uh, there's something called a mortgage note. And mortgages and notes are basically debt. And you'll notice uh, over my, uh, cor uh, my shoulder here, uh, Jimmy Napier's book, Invest in Debt, is an amazing resource. And he teaches about the benefits of buying paper. And that is buying a stream of monthly payments. So busy professionals a lot of people you know you see these tv shows they get all excited about picking up hammers and getting contractors and all that stuff but most of them never do it and even a lot of them that do do it don't have the time or the skills so it becomes a losing proposition for those that try it a lot of times and most people just never get started and as you alluded to that's the worst thing is not to get started the sooner you get started the better well, that's a, good, so, that's a great uh, segue. So let me ask you. So yeah. with everything going on right now, with, with obviously the, the, the COVID situation and, you know, right, right. it doesn't look like it's ending anytime soon. Um, is this a good time to buy? Or do we just kind of sit back, preserve our cash? What What's your kind of advice? I know that you, you know, again, everyone should like look at their own situation. They should consult their own advisors. But from your experience, from, from what you're advising, what you're doing, is this a good time to even contemplate, you know, getting into real estate? Well, it's a great, it's a great time, time because uh, you the, it, you can make money in any cycle of real estate if you have the right strategy. And so the important thing is to know who you're working with and to have the right uh, advisors, to have the right uh, consultants, or to have the right mentors. 
And uh, for example, if you were to buy a, a, a note, which is a, 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 a piece of debt, what you're doing is you're putting your money in uh, to buy a, a stream of payments that come out every month. The benefits to that are it's much easier than actually owning a building and um, you're not worried about depreciation uh, to the extent that you don't actually own the property. You're buying a stream of payments. Now, will there be more uh, 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 distressed assets over the next 18 months? Almost certainly. But uh, the people who are going to benefit the most from that are the people who are already investing now, who have their contacts, who have their strategies, who uh, are already deploying capital and are making money now because then when all these new uh, distressed loans hit the market, it's going to be a buying frenzy and you're just going to be very well positioned. So you can make money now and make more money later uh, the sooner you get started. So I, you know, I'm going to make an assumption here, Gary, and there's, uh, there's maybe three or four different types of people watching this or who potentially may watch this. One is people who are already in the, in the industry. They're going to say, right. I know all this stuff. I don't need to listen to this. Right? That's, sure. that's fine. Then there's a group of people who are like, you know, I mean, thinking about investing in real estate. I don't know where to get started. And, and then there's me people who are kind of not even aware that it's even a, a option. Right. So let's kind of look at that, that middle group of people for just for a second, because I sure. kind of fall into that space because, you know, I, 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 you know, I help run a couple of businesses, do coaching. And in my mind, what I'm saying to myself is, Gary, I'm too busy. Right. I know what you're saying is, 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 is golden, but where the hell am I going to get time? To, to, to run around, you know, look for properties and do this and do that and, and, and deal with tenants and whatever. So, so what about for folks like us? What advice do you have for people who think, you know, um, they're too busy to take advantage of what you're saying? Well, the first thing is to, find, to figure out what kind of uh, investment even makes sense for you. So if you don't want to be a landlord, if you don't want to have the, I would call it hassle of owning properties, then if you're a busy professional and you don't want a second job, you just want to have passive investments that put money in your pocket every month, then you should probably not go out and buy properties to start with. You should probably consider something like tax liens or the uh, business that I'm mostly involved in, which is buying a distressed or discounted notes. You can buy either performing notes or non-performing notes. And for the average uh, 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 professional, uh, a performing note is something you don't even have to mess with. It, the, the tenant, the borrower is already paying every month. They've got a, a pay history that's already proven. Uh, there's a payment processor that handles all the interaction with the borrower and they just send you a check every month. I think that is the best place to start. And But even with that, there's a lot to know about where do I go, how do I find them? So that's where I recommend that you work with somebody uh, like us that is... Uh, passive monthly profits or uh, someone else that is in that business and uh, work with them and let them start to bring you deals. You can evaluate them very simply because uh, what I love about notes is that you can dial in your risk tolerance uh, because uh, you can determine how much am I willing to put in on this uh, asset, this loan based upon the actual physical property. If a property is worth $100,000, and you're coming in uh, at 50,000 or even less, uh, you know that if anything happened to you, uh, the, the best thing that, that that borrower could do is stop making payments because you would make money hand over fist if you ever took over that property. Uh, so, it, but if you want higher yield, if you want higher monthly payments, you'll probably have to go with something closer to 70 or 80% investment to value, but then you'll be getting a much bigger uh, chunk of money every month. So it all depends upon what you're looking for. But the key is to have the right team in place and you can either assemble them yourselves, train them yourselves, educate yourself, or you can just hire the team already in place. And of course, for most people, that's what I recommend. That's awesome. Um, you know, as I'm kind of listening to you to kind of share your wisdom here, I can fully understand why they call you the professor of, of cash flow. Um, I, you know, I think it really helps to have someone a trusted resource like you to kind of go to, especially for the, those who are kind of just starting out, right? Someone just right, to talk right. to, have a conversation with, and just to explore what the options are. I think it's very easy to get confused 
you know, with, with all the different types of options when it comes to real estate, where do I even start? What kind of property, commercial, residential, flips, flops, you know, you name it. <laughs> and, and it's, it's so, you know, it can, it can get so overwhelming that it creates both uh, procrastination, which means that it never gets done. That's you know, right. Um, or people just don't do it. They just, they're just like, I know what, I'm, I'm not getting involved with this. So having someone like you to kind of have a conversation with and just kind of break down the options, right? They may, you, you may or not, may or, sorry, may or may not be the solution to one's uh, challenges, but knowing that they can have a conversation with you, that you're going to put them on the path to making right, the right. better decisions, it, it's invaluable. So, so Phil Gary, you know, thank, thank you for the, uh, the, you know, the work you do with helping folks who are looking to kind of invest. So if someone's listening to this and it's okay, Gary, this is great. You know, I get it, you know, cash flow, capital for future investments, compounding, whatever. But what's my first step? What's my first step, Gary? What, what, you know, if I'm listening to this and I, or, you know, what's the first thing I should do as a potential investor or even someone who's already invested but, but looking to get into more property? What do you recommend? Well, I recommend reaching out to me or if you have somebody who's already doing it, uh, uh, reach out to them. But you can find me at www dot passive monthly profits dot com and I'll even get my cell phone out my cell phone is 818-324-8230 but again uh, you should be able to see the uh, the link to our website and that's uh, for most people that's just the best way to get started because you can uh, uh, give me your information I will follow up within a day or two and uh, we can sell or you can just uh, schedule a Well, call with me and I can tell you do, I can explain it. I can also come you and figure out what's best for you. Awesome. Well, you know, uh, you know, who you remind me of there's um, many years ago, he still may be around. I, th I think his name was um, an individual who, who was teaching uh, how to, people, how to get uh, uh, grants and stuff on TV. He used to have an info commercial, um, kind of a, a very professor looking like character. Interesting. And, and, uh, and you remind me of him, like a wealth right. of wisdom when it comes to you know investing in real estate and options that you know hey if you're if you're busy you don't have time you know diff different vehicles that people can uh, choose to make those investments right well thank you i'll take that as a compliment uh, it's funny yeah pe people my whole life of even when i was uh, you know i had a, a job in my late 20s uh, with uh, with a small engineering firm uh, before i went to intel and the owner's wife started calling me Professor Peyreau for no apparent reason. And I, I wasn't even teaching at the time, although I was actually a professor in the Cal State uh, uh, system for a while. And uh, some of my students uh, were actually turned out to be my customers when I was working with Intel. So it was, it was quite enjoyable. I love teaching. But right now, I, I really love uh, just sharing uh, great cash flow deals with people who are do, too busy to find them for themselves. You know, you know what I do? One of those uh, moments where I kind of push my glasses kind of up and say, no, uh, I'm actually a professor to show you how to go from payroll to cash flow. <laughs> <laughs> That's, so, right. So, That's right. So, That's so right. So let's, let's end with a little bit of a deeper uh, insight into the white paper here. Um, so again, the, the title of the white paper is Why Saving Money uh, for Retirement is Dumb. So what's in the white paper and why should someone uh, download it? Well, uh, what it shows, really, it's about a shifting your mindset. And so many things in, in life and in business are uh, tied to your mindset. And what we always want to do is we want to get that nest egg. We want to build it up. It makes us feel good. The more money we have in our 401k, our IRA, or our bank account, the better we feel about ourselves. And it's uh, so, you know, flipping properties, making $150,000 on a flip, that's sexy. That's exciting. And it's always out there on TV, uh, HGTV, and all these guys are out there flipping properties. And uh, you know they show you the wins, and uh, uh, you know, and 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 it is exciting, and it, it can be done, and it, and you can you can even make it work so that you have other people doing most of the work for you. So it's not impossible uh, to build wealth that way. But the thing is, if you stop flipping, or if you have, or if the market takes a correction and now property values are falling, you can lose it all pretty quickly. So I prefer to have uh, cash flow coming in. 
Now, the thing about cash flow is that it is more stable than the value of properties. If you're banking on the value of real estate, you know, I live in Los Angeles and uh, Los Angeles real estate is some of the highest in the nation, not the highest, you know, the Bay Area is even significantly higher, but you know, we've got some pretty expensive properties out here. You get to Malibu, it gets very expensive, but that goes up and down so much. So if you are banking on your real estate portfolio uh, or the stock market, for example, I mean, I don't have to tell anybody that the stock market doesn't always go up and it's now at record highs. So uh, when there is a big move, do you think that the next big move is going to be up or down? Well, I, I think there are a lot of people who are very concerned and there's a lot of very smart people with their money out of the market right now. And so the growth is being fueled by a, a lot of millions of small investors. The, a lot of the big guys have their money out of the market. So um, the, uh, the key to this is to shift your mindset from getting a big nest egg to identifying what you really need, what you really need to support your lifestyle. If $10,000 is enough for you, then if you focus on getting, building up cash flow assets to pay you $10,000 a month, that can be done relatively quickly. And I know a lot of real estate investors who have completely replaced their day job income in three to four years. Wow. Now that's not the majority. As a matter of fact, the majority of real estate investors who go to all those meetings end up washing out and never making a dime. So you have to be careful. You have to have the right people, the right approach, the right strategy, the right expectations. But if you start acquiring assets, if you, if you acquired an asset like a single family home or a mortgage note can easily yield $500 a month. Well, if you do that 20 times, you are now at uh, uh, $100,000, I mean, $120,000 a year, 12, uh, you know, $10,000 a month. And wow. so that's not hard to do. If you acquire four assets a year, then to get to 20 assets, that's five years. Wow, that's a phenomenal. Well, look, hey, our time is running out here. Um, so Gary, um, AKA uh, Professor Cashflow, thank you for sharing your wisdom your knowledge. And folks, if you are watching this and you want to kind of explore some of the concepts that Gary has shared today on, on this uh, show, please get in touch with him. Uh, Gary, one more time, what is the best way to get in touch with you? Well, it's really, it's, it's uh, my website is www.passivemonthlyprofits.com. Well, there you have it. So again, folks, if you want to expand your knowledge on how to produce cash flow from real estate, please get in touch with Gary. And I'm sure he'll be happy to help you uh, expand yeah. your wealth and your cash flow through real estate. Again, this is Bijal with Expand the Business here today. Thank you for watching. And please, if you found this of interest, like, share, and all those other things you have to do for these videos these days. And I look forward to speaking to you soon. Gary, thank you again for being on the show. Thank you, Bijal. It was a pleasure.